Welcome to our series, Meet Our DJs. My name is China Luan. I am the founder and CEO of the global award-winning female DJ agency, We Run The World Female DJ Agency. You're right, the name is quite lengthy, right? It's quite long. There is a reason for that. I, I decided to call the name We Run The World Female DJ Agency because I didn't want it to be a UK awareness. I wanted it to be a global awareness, which is why it's called We Run The World Female DJ Agency. The main concept behind We Run The World Female DJ Agency is to make pathways for female DJs in a male-dominated industry and definitely to raise the profile of female DJs worldwide. It's very, very clear that COVID-19 have derailed our success at the moment, but we, we, would, we would not let that discourage us from our main concept, and that is to raise awareness for female DJs. Before I start, I just want to shout, say a big shout out to our sponsor today, and that's Sarah Artistry. Sarah, Sarah Artistry is now UK leading private beauty qualification provider with over 164 qualifications, including VRQ and NVQ. So we are going to give one lucky viewer today a beauty treatment courtesy of Sarah Artistry. I will be talking to the adventurous EMA. EMA is originally from the humble Manchester. Last year, she decided to opt out and flew to Bali. So I'm gonna call her I'm gonna get her in and I'm gonna be talking to her right now. Hey Hi Faith Hey hi here mate how are you doing? How are you doing? How are you? How are you doing? Well, I'm I'm beautiful. I'm blessed. I'm really, really blessed. And yourself? Yeah, yeah, I'm really good. I'm good. It's like really dark here because it's like midnight in Bali. So yeah, I'm having to do I'm having to do the interview and the mix in my room in my villa so we don't wake up the neighbours outside. Oh, thank you so much. We should have changed the time, but you know what? All we're right. just gonna jump in it and do it we're just gonna jump yeah, in it so before yeah, absolutely that's what it's about it's about jumping in it and just get it done hi yeah. so before hey, before Sarah. we start before Sorry. before we start hey 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 before we start can you tell the viewers how they can win today uh one hour beauty treatment from Sarah Artistry. Do you want to tell the viewers? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so it's, it's an amazing prize. I checked out the website as well, really cool. They've got like loads of amazing products and um, treatments. In particular, they've got Botox, which I really need at the moment because I've been getting so many wrinkles it. from the sun out here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, yeah, so basically how you can win this amazing prize is by listening to my interview and answering the question, um, where was I based before I moved to Bali? Was it Manchester or was it Leeds? And I'll give, I'll give you a clue, okay? This is my Manchester hat. It's got the Manchester B on it. Oh, wow. Fantastic, fantastic. So for you, you for one lucky... Absolutely. So leave a comment. So the question is, where, where is 
EMA originated from Manchester or Leeds. And you would walk away today with Sarah Artistry Clinical Hydrofacial Treatment. Woo! Woo! Exciting. So Woo! keep commenting and let us know. So, Sarah, like, well, thank you so... It's worth, like, about 150 quid, right? Yeah, it's worth 100 and 150 pounds. So, please come in. You know, someone has to walk away with it. We want to give it away. We want to give it out. It's all about giving right about now, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, Sarah, let's get the ball rolling. Let's get the ball rolling. So, you opt out from Manchester last year to the yeah. paradise of Bali. So, tell no. us, how is it going so far? from leaving UK last year, tell us. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. I've had such a great journey. Like I came here to Bali um, two Januarys ago, like literally just got a one-way ticket, just decided on my, on my, on my 35th birthday, right, that's it, I wanna, I wanna change my life. <laughs> I wanna leave wow. the UK. And I, to be fair, I was gonna go to Ibiza, but then I spoke to a few different DJs and they said, no, you should go to Bali. It's like, you know, the new kind of Ibiza on that side of the world. So yeah, I just bought one my ticket, came over to suss out like the scene and stuff. Then I went to Australia to see my best friend that lives over there, Gemma, and lived with her for three months and her family. And then you got me an amazing gig in China. <laughs> hey! You know what, talking about that, it was so funny when he was talking about it because every time he said China, I'm thinking, is that me or the country? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. No, it's like, no, no. it's the country. <laughs> Go on. So tell us about China. Tell us about China. No, China was such an experience. I, like, it was amazing. But the, I mean, you saw the pictures. The bar that I was playing in was just incredible. It was like on the top floor of like, the 11th tallest building in the world. And I got to live in the hotel, which was like a five-star hotel, got a really nice suite. I mean, I was very lost in translation because it was a very Chinese town. It wasn't very, there wasn't a lot of foreigners that came there, so it was very local. So it was really hard at first to kind of do things, but the hotel was so sweet and they, they gave me a personal assistant to begin with to help me to go out shopping. Wow, I remember, I remember you telling us that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, but do you know what though? Like it, it was amazing playing in that bar and I met so many interesting people. I actually met and made friends with the uh, president of China, his niece. <laughs> and she, wow. she still- Wow, she still, how about that? I know, she still messages me sometimes, just like, hello, Emma, how are you? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was, oh uh, although I couldn't communicate very well with everybody, like, I don't know, you kind of just, like, deal with the situation, don't you? And, like, everybody that worked in the bar, they were so sweet, and although we couldn't speak to each, have a good conversation with each other like you and me are now, we found other ways to communicate and... Yeah, I, I do miss them guys, actually. I made, I made some good friends out there. Um, but yeah, it was, it was an amazing experience, and I thank you for that. Oh, thank you. I mean, the client thought you was amazing. Oh, you yeah. Know, they so say to us, we want to have Emma again. Oh, yeah, okay. so it was kind of vice versa. They loved you, and you loved them. I love that. So they loved you, and you loved them equally, right? I really, really yeah, love yeah, that. They, Fantastic. Yeah. It was good, it was good. Uh, but I don't think I'll be going so back in, anytime soon. <laughs> I'm, I was just saying, COVID-19, I've derailed all our gigs. There's nothing we can do. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, so, so, but hopefully very soon we need to stay positive and we need to just, you know, just keep doing what we're doing. We just need to carry on doing what we're doing. So exactly. I know you've got your own magazine. You've got your own magazine, Viva Magazine. Tell us about your magazine, Viva Magazine. What is it about? What is it about? What's the concept behind it? Tell us more about it. So Viva Magazine is a lifestyle magazine um, about the northwest of England, mostly Manchester and Cheshire. Um, so okay. me and a friend, we, we set it up like over 10 years ago. And mm -hmm. it became like one of the biggest lifestyle magazines in that area. Um, wow. Yeah, it, it, was, it was such an experience doing that because 
we, I mean, we proper struggled at first. It was really, really hard, but we kind of got through the barrier and, and, and I mean, it gave us such an amazing lifestyle. Like some of the things we got to do and some of the um, people, like we got to interview, like money can't buy that kind of thing, you know? So um, I can imagine. We, used to get, we used to get invited to like all the cool parties and, um, and get to travel as well. We went on so many cool like travel um, features around the world and, yeah, it was, we really built, built it up as a brand. And it, it was kind of, when I decided to move away, my business partner, Rebecca, she had moved down south to be with her boyfriend. And we were just going to, like, give the magazine up. Um, and then um, a couple of my mates who were in PR, they said, no, don't give it up. We want to buy it off you. So I was like, great, okay. So um, a friend called Emma Chadwick and Sam Bramwell and um, Chrissy Hutchinson, they... Um, took it off our hands and they're still running it now so so yeah so I, I don't own it anymore I just like I have a little wow. column in it each month which I write about my experiences wow. traveling but my yeah my friends are all running it now <laughs> so they bought it from you so they actually paid yeah, you yeah, for yeah. it yeah wow. yeah yeah so, so yeah they're they're all running it in Manchester it's just online now though because print's gone out the window hasn't it so Oh, wow. so how long did you have it for? How long did you have a magazine for? How long was it going for before you sold it? Um, so I um, ran it for 10 years. With, uh, with my business 10 partner, years? Rebecca. 10 years we did it, yeah. Wow, that is a long time. That is Ten definitely a long time. Years. 10 <laughs> years. I mean, we're still a baby. We run the world. We, we like, we eight years old. We're still a baby compared to your magazine, you know? So <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. Yes, and with COVID nineteen derailed us, you know, you know. But we we, we will get there. We will get there. Yeah. <laughs> so I know you're also an, a producer as well, and you've you've released a couple of tracks and everything else. So tell us about any new mu mu music coming up. Have you got any song coming out? What's going on yes, there? Yes, I do. <laughs> nice. So I want to know a bit more. <laughs> Since um. So since I've been over in Bali, I, I, I had a few, a couple of tracks out um, last year and the year before, but um, I don't know, since I've been traveling, I, I feel like I've kind of found my sound now and know what music I want to produce now. And anyway, when everything went on lockdown and stuff, my, um, my friend messaged me and he said, oh, Ems, my friend Nick Hussey is stranded in Bali. Um, and he's like, he can't work at the moment properly because he hasn't got all his equipment here. And I said, oh, you're there and you've got a keyboard and stuff. Like, would you lend it to him? And I was like, what, the Nick Hussey? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, of course I will. He's a bloody legend. <laughs> so anyway, Nick, hey. came, Nick came to um, where I was staying and I lent him my stuff. And then I just said, oh, Nick, um, I'm just producing some tracks at the moment. I need a little bit of a help. <laughs> will you help me? Um, so anyway, yeah, I've been I've been in the studio with him producing some music whilst you know everything's been going on because we can't DJ over here at the moment. Well, things are starting to get back to normal, but yeah, like for the last like three months we haven't been able to DJ. So yeah, I've been producing some stuff with him in the studio, uh, in his studio that he set up in his bedroom. Wow. You see, <laughs> wow. wow. So you're getting in the bedroom side. Be careful. Yeah, totally. Totally. Um, so amazing, <laughs> amazing to work with him because he's like, you know, he's signed to like Defective and um, wow. CR2 Records. So I've been learning so much from him and it's just been amazing, you know, such an amazing opportunity for me to work with him. So yeah, I've got like, um, done two tracks of him so far and I'm going back into the studio next week to get on another one as well. <laughs> So when are you guys releasing these tracks? Have you guys decided when you're going to release the track? Um, yeah, hopefully this year. Um, yeah, definitely by the end of the year. Um, but yeah, I'm going to play them in my mix later, actually. So one of them's called, Oh, exciting. Um, yeah, one of them's actually got my brother's girlfriend on it because she's an amazing singer. And she was actually on The Voice this year. Yes. Um, oh, yeah, wow. Sarah Goodwin. In, with her band Be Bella Vore. um so yeah so it was, it was it was amazing to work with her with her vocals because she's got great vocals so and she's also wow. going to be on the next track as well 
Fantastic. Thank you so much. We will, we will keep an eye and listen for the track with Sarah. So for you to win the competition today, guys, you need, Sarah, do you want to tell EMA, do you want to tell them how they can win the giveaway today? Yes, you can win this amazing beauty prize by answering this question. Where was I based in the UK before I moved to Bali? Was it Manchester or was it Leeds? And here's so a little please clue. This is my Manchester hat with the B. <laughs> that is a lot of clue. That is a lot of clue. <laughs> so we need to, so tell us, was EMA based in Manchester or Leeds? And we will give you an hour of clinical hydrofacial treatment by Sarah Atistri. So let's move along Amazing. now, Sarah. How did you start DJing? Um, so, you know, it's a bit of a random one, actually. I think I reckon everybody says that, don't they? Oh, it's a bit of a random one, but this really was. So um, with the magazine, um, we used to put on parties as well for advertising clients. And mm -hmm. we, um, we hosted this party for a, uh, a bar called Atlas in Manchester. And they wanted um, a celebrity to DJ that night. So um, I um, was friends with Bez from the Happy Mondays. So, and his, um, the guy that he DJs with, Vince Vega. So um, anyway, I, I booked them to DJ and halfway through the night, I'm gonna take a break from you bar. Mm. And I was like, what? Mm. I don't know what to do. Like, what do I do? And showed me which buttons to press. And then by the time they got back from their break, I was like, no, 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 no. I don't want to get off the decks now. <laughs> so, um, wow, I you loved that. it. Yeah, I loved it. I was like, right, this is my new job. So then after that, um, Bez's D uh, DJ Vince, he um, showed me, like, taught me a few things. And then um, my friend, um, I don't, know if you know a guy called Howard Marks, Mr. Nice. Unfortunately, he's yeah, dead yeah. now. But um, oh. but yeah, he um, he um, also helped me get into DJing, and I was DJing at some festivals with him, which was really cool. And I got my first gig actually was um, in the VIP tent of this festival um, for Gio Goy, the um, oh. the Manchester brand Gio Goy. Yeah, okay. and do you know what? I, I didn't even know what the hell I was doing that day, but somehow I managed to flag it. <laughs> wow, wow, um, wow. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was fun. And then, so, yeah, just I mean, of, like, since... Off, I just... Sorry. Since then, what are some of the festivals you've DJed at? Because I know you've done a lots of festivals since then. Um... Yeah, I've done like Hideout in Croatia. That was amazing. Um, I've done Bestival down uh, down south in Dorset. Uh, I think my favourite one though has to be Glastonbury. <laughs> wow! So you got to DJ for the the one and only. Gla wow! 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 Yeah. That's just amazing. How did you get that gig? How did you get that? So I met this guy Biff at a party um, down in London. And then he was friends with my photographer friend. And she, um, he asked her to, he basically runs the Glade area in Glastonbury. And um, which is, this, is amazing. It's probably one of my favorite areas at Glasto. And he asked my friend, Elspeth, who's a photographer to uh, photograph um, the area for him that, uh, that year. And she said, oh, okay, yeah, no, that's fine. Can I bring a plus one? And he said, yeah, you can, but only if it's Emma. <laughs> so I was wow. like, amazing. Wow. Yeah, so then um, I said to my friend, I was like, oh, do you think you'll let me DJ? She was like, well, you might, you might as well. Oh, there's no harm in asking. So I just like sent him a little cheeky message. I was like, oh, Biff, thank you so much for the Glastonbury ticket. I was just wondering if like, if he had any like DJ slots that need filling, because I'd love to play. I just sent him over some of my mixes wow. and he's like, yeah, I'll put you on, definitely. So um, yeah, he put me on on the Sunday at seven o'clock 
I didn't think there'd be anybody in the tent because like, I'm not really a big name at Glastonbury. And yeah, there was quite a few people in there. It was a really, it was a really, really good gig actually. I loved it. So that's, so your story just said is sometimes it's not harming asking, right? Just asking yeah, sometimes can take you a long way, you know, and not have that fear to say, oh, look at me. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's a great story. That is a great story. So tell us as well, um, who are some of the DJs that you've warmed up for? Because I know you've, you've DJ for a lot of, you've DJ alongside a lot of big DJs. So let us know. So what other DJs have you warmed up for? Um, I warmed up for Rudimental in uh, B, uh, B, BH Mallorca. Um, that was incredible. In fact, my friend Miss G has just come on the live feed, and she was um, she came with me to that gig. She was on the side of the stage going mental. <laughs> um, wow! Well, I can imagine. Um, oh my god, I can't even think. Um, oh, do you got? Do you guys? Do you know the Fun Loving Criminals? I used to be the warm up DJ for them. Um, yeah, they're friends of mine. You know, uh, running around, robbing banks, so wet on a Scooby snack. You know? Wow, you got vocal too. You could sing too. <laughs> you need to be in the voice. <laughs> oh, wow. That's incredible. You've had such an amazing, you've had such an amazing DJ career. Am I right to say that? Yeah, it's, it's been good so far. Like, like, I've been DJing now for six years and... Yeah, I yeah, it's been really good. <laughs> it's been amazing, actually. Ama like, I don't know, it kind of blows my mind what I've kind of done so far, but I just feel like I've, there's still a lot more to come, if you know what I mean. And I'm just so happy that I'm here in Bali because uh, the scene over here is just amazing. It's so good. You have to come out, China. So what is it? I will, as soon as the COVID-19 is over. You know, I'm just waiting for the COVID-19 to be all right, to be okay, you know. I will be coming over. <laughs> so, uh, so what's your DJ kit? So what do you take when you go to DJ? What's your DJ rider? What do you use when you go to DJ? <laughs> I can't tell you that. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> well, at the moment, do you know, <laughs> it, used, it used to be a bit of a bad rider, but now... Um, now I've become really, really healthy, actually. I probably um, just ask for a coconut and maybe a couple of bintang. <laughs> okay, 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 back, okay. Back in, back in the UK, it used to be probably like three bottles of Prosecco, a bottle of vodka, some M&Ms, but only the orange ones, you know? Okay, maybe, great maybe stuff. Craig, maybe Craig David singing in the corner, you know, in my dressing room. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Why Craig not? David. Why not? Okay, so so you're going to do a live set for us, right? Are you ready for the live set? I am indeed. Okay, just before yeah, you yeah, do, yeah. before you do, we just want to say thank you to our sponsor for this episode, and that is Sarah at History. We're giving one lucky viewer an hour of clinical hydro facial treatment at one of Sarah at History locations. So please let us know where is Sarah officially from? Manchester Emma. or Leeds? Emma. Where EMA is from? Emma. <laughs> Manchester or Leeds, right? And you could be running away, and walking away my, today with a giveaway. Here's my Manchester <laughs> hat. She's always giving you guys clue. That yeah. is, you guys are so lucky. I'm not giving you guys clue. She can give you guys clue all day long. <laughs> so, so we're gonna be so so. You're gonna start your DJ set for us. So I'm just gonna kick back now. I'm gonna let you do your thing. Get your dance moves on, China. So um, the, the first tune that I'm playing goes out to all the girls at We Run The World Female DJ Agency. Um, and the other songs are kind of tunes that um, ha like have been big for me whilst I've been traveling. And I'm also gonna play my two new- Yep, let's do this, let's do this. Okay. 
Okay.